Most of us have heard the phrase, canary in a coal mine. Years ago, miners would bring a caged canary into the mines as an early warning device for hazardous air quality. Canaries are more sensitive to toxic air than humans. If the canary died, the miners' new conditions were unsafe and left the mine. What if the canary not only died, but also grew strange appendages or changed gender while in the mine? Scientists say frogs are the new canaries in the coal mine. Both are highly susceptible to environmental toxins. Most frogs have exceptionally permeable skin. Frogs absorb oxygen, water, and toxins through their skin. Frogs are dying and disappearing in alarming numbers around the world. Scientists have noted missing, extra, and malformed appendages. Male frogs are becoming female and not by choice, which could affect future fertility and the natural gender balance. In the lower Chippewa River Basin, one of our local canaries is the pickerel frog. The pickerel is on the Wisconsin DNR's list of species of greatest conservation need. It needs help from Wisconsinites and the DNR. In the lower Chippewa River Basin, bodies of water such as lakes, streams, and rivers surround us. All these waterways, like others around the world, are connected. Even if a property is not located on a body of water, its runoff flows into the storm drains, which flow into rivers and waterways. Chemicals from our pristine, golf course-inspired lawns flow into rivers and waterways. Studies show that lawn and garden chemicals negatively impact frogs. Studies included malathion, found in pesticides, atrazine, found in herbicides, and glyphosate, found in Roundup. Imagine your home. Now imagine parts of your home flooded with toxic chemicals. How do you get to your kitchen? Do you stop eating? Do you move away? When an animal's habitat is broken up, we call that habitat fragmentation. Habitat fragmentation is what the pickerel frog is facing. Our yards are part of the pickerel frog's habitat. Directly, when they spend time in our yard, or indirectly, when what we put on our lawn flows into where they live. What is a pickerel-loving citizen to do? Switching from chemical lawn products to eco-friendly versions is the first step. There are professional, organic lawn care companies like the one that services this yard. If businesses and public properties switch to hardy ground covers like clover and creeping flocks, they will not need to waste time, money, water, or chemicals caring for the landscape. Property owners should plant shrubs and perennials along shorelines and keep sand, turf, and rock areas to a minimum to reduce runoff. People can add a rain garden if living in flood-prone area where water tends to collect. Remove part or all of your lawn and add gardens with native plant species. Native species, both plants and animals, evolved naturally in a region and were not introduced by humans. The pickerel, along with other native species and their habitats, 
come together to create our local ecosystem and its biodiversity. Biodiversity is defined as the number and variety of plants and animals within a specific geographic region, like the Lower Chippewa River Basin. By allowing toxins to enter our rivers and waterways, we fragment the pickerel's habitat. We could lose the pickerel and lower our biodiversity. You can help create a healthy, connected, and whole environment for our little pickerel frog and the rest of the inhabitants by reducing lawn chemical use and runoff. That means a better environment for all of us.